Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice cubic equation. We have 2x cubed minus x squared equals 1, and we're going to be solving for x values. And I'll be presenting at these three methods, even though not all methods will be complete. All right, let's start with the first method. So far, my first method will be to treat this as a general cubic. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 2. And then get that. Now I want to use substitution, uh, you know, to work with the cubic formula. I want to just replace x with something. How about x equals y plus 1 over 6? And the reason behind that, let me tell you, you take the coefficient of x squared, of course, with the minus sign, you negate it, which gives you one half, and then you divide that by three, which is the degree of this polynomial. Does that make sense? Take the coefficient, negate it, divide by three, then you get this number. And, and a, a variable added to that number will give you x. So if you replace x with y plus 1 over 6, here's what happens. You get 1 plus y plus 1 over 6 to the third power minus 1 half of y plus 1 over 6 to the second power equals 1 half. Of course, nothing happens on the right-hand side because that's a constant. And now to cube this, I use a different identity, y cubed plus 1 over 6 cubed, which is 1 over 216, plus 3y times 1 over 6, multiply by y plus 1 over 6. And this will give me y squared plus 1 over 3y plus 1 over 36. And then at the end, we'll get 1 half. Now, let's try to simplify this a little bit. This should give me y cubed plus 1 over 216 plus... Here, uh, some terms cancel out. Uh, so we can go ahead and divide the 3 into 6. So that gives us 1 half y squared. And then since we have 1 half, that will be 1 over 12 here. And then minus 1 half y squared minus 1 over 6y minus 1 over 72 equals 1 half, which you can, of course, subtract from both sides. But what is really, really significant here is that y squared cancels out this one and that one so we end up with what is called a depressed cubic that cubic that only contains y cubed and y in a constant term which can then be solved with the cubic formula i'm not going to get into the details like i said earlier one of the methods will be incomplete and it's this one okay so let's go ahead and proceed with the second method now we do have a special polynomial equation. You know why? Let me show you. First of all, the one on the right hand side can be written as 2 minus 1, right? And the reason behind that is we're going to put these numbers on the left and then factor by grouping. Here's how it, it's done 2x cubed will be paired up with minus 2, and minus x squared will be paired up with plus 1. And now we can go ahead and factor by grouping. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So let's go ahead and factor out a 2 here. That gives us x cubed minus 1. And a minus 1 here will give us x squared minus 1. Now, do you see what I'm talking about? We have two factorable polynomials. And moreover, they have a common factor. This says difference of two cubes. So we can write it as 2 times x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1, minus 1 times x plus 1, times x minus 1 from difference of two squares. Now, notice that x minus 1 is a common factor, so we can pull it out. And inside, we're going to have 2 times this, which is 2x squared plus 2x plus 2 minus x minus 1. I'm distributing the negative 1 over the x plus 1. And then if you simplify... The quadratic, you get 2x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. Now, we get a very simple solution from the first one, which is x equals 1. And we'll talk about that again later. The second one is a quadratic, so why not use the quadratic formula, right? So, let's see how we can apply it. Negative b 
plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is 8. Uh-oh, Houston, we got a complex solution. We got actually two complex solutions. Non-real complex, I mean. When I say complex, some people say, oh, real numbers are complex too. Well, yeah, but that's not what I mean. So this is going to be 2a, which is 4. Square root of negative 7 is root 7i. And then x can be written as negative 1 plus minus root 7i divided by 4. In other words, only one of the roots is real, and that's, pos uh, that's perfectly fine with cubic equations. When I show you the graph, this will make more sense, right? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and talk about the third method, because I think the third method is the best, in my opinion, but it only applies to certain problems. But since this is a competition level or type problem, it could appear on math Olympiads too at different levels. I'm not talking about the international Olympiads, of course. When I say Olympiad, oh no, this is not an Olympiad problem. This is too easy. Okay, maybe for you. But this comes up a lot, this type of problem. So you need to know the trick. And the trick is if you put everything on the same side and look at the coefficients, 2 minus 1 minus 1 equals 0, do you know what that indicates? The sum of the coefficients is 0. That means x equals 1 is a solution. And guess what that means? That means x minus 1 is a factor because from factor theorem, if x equals 1 is a solution, then x minus 1 is a factor. So how does that help us? Well, knowing that x minus 1 is a factor, you can definitely divide this polynomial by x minus 1 with long division. If you like that, I don't like it, but it's not too bad. Let's do it for fun. x goes into 2x cubed 2x squared times then it's 2x cubed minus 2x squared. You must negate and add, sub, I mean, you must negate and add, which means subtraction. Uh-oh, I probably negated twice. And then uh, this should be x squared minus 1. And then here, as you can see, this is x times. If you already know, it's x plus 1 times because you can do that from difference of two squares. You get the answer directly. Or you could do it in two steps. But guess what? This gave you the other factor. Ta-da! That's the power of polynomials, the power of powers. So from here, you get the exact same solutions, right? Of course, but that's not the only way to do it. You could also proceed a little differently, like you can do this. Since we know that x minus 1 is a factor, we can rearrange the terms so that x minus 1 is always a factor, like this. 2x cubed will be followed by 2x squared. Guess what? If you take out 2x squared, you get x minus 1. So always make it divisible x minus 1. That's the whole idea, and you'll get used to it. The more you do it, the better. Plus x squared, and then I want to follow up with minus x, as if I didn't know that was divisible, and then plus x minus 1, and you got it. All of these are divisible by x minus 1. You factor it out, and then you'll get 2x squared plus x plus 1, and proceed as before. It's the, it's the exact same thing. Let me go ahead and show you, I didn't forget, the graph. The graph will tell you a big story, ta-da! There is only one real solution at x equals 1 because the graph only intersects at one point. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to follow A plus B I where I focus on complex numbers. And bye-bye.